Hello, readers of science. This is Bartosz Grzybowski and co-workers from Warsaw, Poland. And today we are going to tell you about upcoming paper, our upcoming paper in science, in which we discuss the possible chemical origins of life. So many, many millions and billions of years ago, Earth was actually a very desolate place. Uh, volcanoes, meteorites, it was hot and humid. And somehow, amidst this moon-like landscape, the great architect placed very few, but very important and central molecules, small molecules like water, like ammonia, like nitrogen, like methane gas, and two more shown here. Now, these molecules can react with each other, and um, you can imagine that as they react, they give rise to molecules that are more and more and more complex. After two reactions, three reactions are becoming more complex. But it's still very far from known or certain whether and how they gave rise to any living forms or even to the building blocks of life, like amino acids, like the components of uh, nucleic acids, and so on and so on. Now, as you can imagine, the number of combinations in which these molecules can react and the products that they produce, how then they can react with each other, and so on and so on, can be very, very huge. So people have been trying to, you know, to, to postulate as a particular synthesis, starting maybe from water, ammonia, and acetonitrile, and how within a few steps we can get this amino acid, or maybe that amino acid. But, as you will see shortly, the number of possibilities, the reactions that could have happened, was actually much bigger, right? There were also molecules that might have emerged, but for some reason, life has not chosen them. So the question is, which molecules were chosen, how, and why not the other ones? Now, to study this entire universe of possible molecules that can be created, we created a software called Alchemy, and uh, you see it in the next screenshot. Now, alchemy starts with the starting materials. I told you six. Yes, these are the six molecules. Then you specify the number of synthetic generations, how many times we allow them to react. And here is a very simple tree of life. At the bottom, six molecules from which we start, and maybe on the order of 10 products that they can give rise to. Now, the rules of reactivity, obviously, are added to the machine. So how the products are generated from the substrates, this is you know, the, the, the input to the computer. It has to know the rules of chemical reactivity. But what it produces using these rules of chemical reactivity, this is, of course, up to the machine. And of course, with 10 products, any chemist could have done so. But let's continue. These molecules, you see, they're still very, very simple. Let's continue. Uh, let's say, dear machine, dear computer, use the same six building blocks, but now you can react them up to two times, two synthetic generations. Um, again, alchemy is working. You see, the molecules are getting more complicated, and the tree is growing. There is a second generation of this tree, and the red dot over which the pointer is now hoovering, um, this is interesting. This is the first amino acid, glycine. So after two steps, yes, the first molecule that we know is present in modern day organisms is already seen there in the simulator of prebiotic chemistry. Um, in the software, clicking on the node, on the red node in this case, shows us the, you know, what chemical rules should be used and were used to uh, create this molecule. This particular synthesis is very trivial. It's just a two-step synthesis, but it can apply this kind of synthetic plan. Computer provides it for any molecule within the tree. So now let's try something more realistic. Let's close this one. And uh, again, we start from our six magical molecules. But now we are going to say up to five synthetic generations. This is still very little on the time scale of life, five reactions. But you see now the tree of life is actually much more complex. It actually expands more strongly than exponential. It, 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 it's booming with molecules. And now we see many red dots. These are the molecules that we know exist. They're, they've been incorporated into modern day 
living organisms. And then there's this entire universe of um, molecules that are colored here in um, blue. These are the molecules that were not chosen. So one of the questions that we tackle in the paper is what distinguishes the chosen from the not chosen one? It's a very apocalyptic question, but you know it has a more mundane explanation, meaning that once, you know, the red ones are more uh, soluble in water, but they're also more balanced in terms of hydrogen bonding, so they can engage into formation of, they can form aggregates, larger structures from which then life might have um, evolved. Now, looking at the stream in some more detail, um, we go on this red note, whoa, this is uracil. This is a component of a nucleic acid that is in, this is our genetic code. You see, clicking on it gives us the prescription how to make this particular molecule in five or six synthetic steps. Um, now, this synthesis was actually done by, not by computer, but by a human. It was validated in the lab and, and, and the computer rediscovered in this case, which is reassuring, but this is maybe not so novel. What is more novel is that the machine can also trace pathways to molecules of life like this malic acid here that was previously not made under prebiotic conditions. We click on this node and we see the, the synthetic prep. We actually committed the synthetic prep to synthetic um, to experimental validation and it worked as planned. So computer knows a little bit of chemistry and it can navigate us in this in this complex network of, of synthetic chemistry that might have been or emerged in the early days of life, early days of Earth, maybe. So there are some more interesting molecules in this tree, and we are going to see one here. It's called aminodiacetic acid. Now, why is this one interesting? That's a funny one, because it can act as a catalyst, meaning that when it coordinates with a metal, it can um, generate, enable new types of reactions, like maybe epoxidations with manganese, but it also can engage not in a single reaction, but in a cycle of three, four, five reactions that loop onto the starting material. And the computer predicted here that one molecule of the starting molecule in orange, right, this amino acetic acid, after the cycle, uh, it will generate two. Now, why is this important? Because we know that everything in life has a tendency to double or to, you know, like life has this propensity to self-amplify or maybe self-regenerate. So we were very much interested whether a simple set of chemical reactions uh, could show this propensity under the conditions compatible with early life. Is there such a molecule? So before, there, there was none, right? Um, so we had this computer prediction that after the cycle, there should be more than 100% of the starting material. We committed this again to experiment and we recorded the yield of 126%, more than 100%. So it means that molecules can self-regenerate. Now, um, this is interesting in its own right and we are able to cook the synthesis, but as we continue our little show here, you will see, we click in alchemy and we are going to see many such cycles in different colors, even within the first four or five synthetic generations. So this is not an exception. This is more of a rule. Life has been full of cycles, full of systems of uh, chemical reactions that talk to each other. They, they, they can actually act in synchrony. Uh, there is a booming field of systems chemistry, and this connects the prebiotic chemistry to systems chemistry. What else is interesting in our tree? Let's close this panel. So here are some molecules within the cycle. Again, many of them. And um, what is very important here is that the software is actually free for everybody to use. Uh, we hope our servers are going to withstand all the traffic. We, we don't have too much computing power, but if you're interested in uh, playing with Alchemy, um, in the paper, there is a short manual how to log in and how to enjoy the software and how to play with the origins of life. Of course, we are not claiming here that um, we are regenerating life yet. We're just providing a little blueprint here with machine's help of how this early chemical evolution might have taken place. And it's not going to be tomorrow. It's not going to be next year, 
might maybe in a decade or so, but these networks are going to grow and sooner or later we are going to start finding, as, as I'm showing you here, cycles. We're going to start finding cycles of molecules that operate inside of our body, right? So really biochemical cycles. And at that time, if we committed to experimental validation and it still works, we'll be able, we'll be in position to say that we understand at least a little bit the origins of life from very simple sex molecules that I showed you at the very beginning of this presentation. I hope you enjoyed this little show and I hope you enjoy the paper and playing with the software and greetings from Poland.